YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subscribers a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to and we answer it in a video just like this if you want to be part of it you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons you can send it directly on patreon if you want to become a team keep it clean patron you can go to patreon.com slash engraven vids and if you don't you can stay right where you at. So shout out to all of y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for supporting the channel like crazy. Uh, but it's, it's a bunch of crazy love uh, from me to y'all uh, and, and from y'all to each other, man. Uh, so we all appreciate it, man. Thank you for all the positivity. Thank you for just making this so much fun. Uh, and we just been having a good time, man. So I appreciate y'all. We got some great questions as we always do. Let's do it. First question on this episode of NFL questions from subscribers came from my guy Nick Brick and you know if it came from Nick Brick he always be bringing it. Anyway he said a question from subs what's up engraving hope you're doing well we're doing very good I appreciate it I try to make this quick oh no I'm looking at it and it's not quick but anyway he said uh, we've seen a lot of reports and little glimpses of Lamar's improved passing and mechanics. He looked great in the few preseason reps in the videos we've seen. Uh, the ball's been jumping out of his hand in a tight spiral. Then after watching the press conference with James Urban, he seemed super excited about the plan they put in place this offseason for Lamar. I've always been optimistic about Lamar's growth in passing considering he comes from a different background than other QBs in which he didn't have personal QB coaches or elite 11 camps and all that other stuff like the elite young QBs. I did some reading and found out that this offseason he's worked with Adam Dado, uh, who also works with Tom Brady, Jared Goff, Carson Wentz, Drew Brees, Dak Prescott, who improved a ton in the passing game, and most impressingly with Matt Ryan the year he went from almost being out of the league to winning MVP and making it to a Super Bowl. I always wondered if Lamar would seek help outside of one of his great friends, Josh Harris, who also served as his QB coach uh, since Louisville. And it looks like he did. Uh, my question is, after reading this and comparing that with what we've sparingly seen in the preseason and camp, do you think this was a good move to work with this guy? Uh, do you think we can believe the reports we've heard? And if so, how much growth do we expect, uh, not just as a passer, but as a total player, considering his passing is fueled by his running and vice versa? Sorry for the long question, but thought this was an interesting one and wanted to get your thoughts. So, yeah, um, I, I did hear about that. I wasn't sure exactly who he worked with. Um, but the fact that he did work with, I'm going to just call him Adam D. Uh, and, and if he's worked with those other guys like Brady, Jared Goff, Carson Wentz, Drew Brees, Prescott and whatnot, and, and Matt Ryan as well. Um, maybe uh, Lamar was like, you know what, it's time to switch it up. It's time to switch it up and it's time to get out of my comfort zone. Uh, because he's obviously been working with uh, Josh Harris for a long time. Um, but sometimes it takes just jumping out there. Uh, to really, uh, get, get, like I said, getting out of the comfort zone to really push yourself to that next level. And we always know that Lamar is always trying to work on something, always trying to improve on something. And it's crazy because as much criticism as you hear from outside people, uh, I'm sure he's his own biggest critic. He is his own biggest critic. Um, and with his passes, like, yeah, his, his passes, they, they have, from what we've seen, they have looked a little bit more crisp this year. Um, but my thing is, is, as long as it's getting there, man, I mean, when the ball is easy to catch, it's easy to catch. So a spiral helps, but it is not the end all be all. Um, but I do love the fact that he's trying to work on everything. Um, so this could, uh, if he can take his game to another level, uh, another year of experience, um, another year in the same, uh, the same offensive system, especially it should have some adjustments here and there, some additions here and there. Um, I, I, I commend it. I, I, I like it. I, I'm rocking with it. Um, so this is a good move uh, from Lamar Jackson. <laughs> Next question came from T502. Could Lamar Jackson have to fight for his starting position if Tyler Huntley was to play how he's playing in the preseason in the regular season? No, not at all. No. Uh, Lamar, is, <laughs> Lamar is Ravens starter. Lamar Jackson's position is not threatened by Tyler Huntley whatsoever. Uh, we love both of them. We hope both of them continue doing well. And I hope that Tyler Huntley ends up getting his own starting job. But Tyler Huntley is not a threat to Lamar Jackson's job, to anything. No, Lamar has brought this team through so much, even before Tyler Huntley was, was here. So Lamar done already been through it with these Ravens, and these Ravens done already been through it with him. Um, and no, Tyler Huntley's nice. He did his thing, but he is not a threat to 
Lamar Jackson. Came from my boy Will. He said, what are doing, Graven? Hope all is well with the fam in these wild times. My question is about the run game. With J.K. Dobbins out, do you see us signing a running back to help with depth? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I, I certainly do. I think they could sign somebody to the practice squad. Uh, and I think that... Um, I think in week one, they'll roll with the guys who they have, Gus Edwards, Tyson Williams, and Justice Hill. Um, but I think they'll sign somebody to the practice squad because I don't think they have any running backs on the practice squad right now. Oh, but anyway, his question wasn't even done. He said, I know they like who they have, and Todd Gurley isn't the answer. No, he's not. He said, even as a backup. But there's always one surprise cut this time of year. And the Eagles parted ways with Jordan Howard. I wish we never parted ways with Mark Ingram for this exact reason. But Jordan Howard is a similar back. Any chance we bring him in on a cheap deal? With the way we run the ball, you can't have too many running backs. That is true. You cannot. You certainly can't have too many running backs. Uh, especially, yeah, the Ravens, their style is crazy, the way they run the ball. Jordan Howard. Um, I, I've i always liked Jordan Howard. Wasn't he with the Bears, too, I believe? Um, but anyway, uh, I just got to... I got to watch film on him um, to just look at his style. Uh, because, again, this is why I say no to Le'Veon Bell so much. Because his style is patient, patient, patient. I got to see how Jordan Howard's is, too. Um, because we can't just... Well, I mean, they could just add, a, add any back or whatnot. But they want to find somebody. You want to find somebody that fits what you do. That will complement what you do. That will come in and be a good contributor to what you already do. So if Jordan Howard's style is one that's quick, makes good, quick decisions, okay, bring him on. Well, probably the practice squad initially. Um, but if he's not, if he's more like patient, more like taking his time in the backfield, then finding a hole, then I would say no. Oh, you said follow-up question. Uh, do you think Giro could get creative and experiment with package with Lamar, packages with Lamar and Tyler Huntley in the backfield together? I get excited just thinking about the possibilities. Uh, let me know what you think, and thanks for taking my question. I do, because he did it with, uh, with Lamar and RG3. So I, I think that G-Row would definitely do it with um, Lamar and Tyler Huntley. I think he would do it in like a um, where the Ravens, they have like a 10-point lead or more. I don't think he would do stuff like that if the game was close. Uh, I, I think if the Ravens had a, a, a decent lead, then he might mess around with it. Next question came from my boy Flirt Nowinski. He said, what's good, bro? Uh, so you know what time it is, LOL. I didn't chime in in a while, so team keep it clean, sit back and relax. Oh, yeah, trust me. That's When he sends something, oh, yeah, we're going to be here for a little minute. He said, remember a while back when I said I hated the Ingram signing because he is an older, more expensive version of Gus? Well, same thing to this day. But I see Gus getting 1500 from scrimmage. What do you think? I can see that, especially if they really involve him like they should because uh, he's improved. His hands improved every year. Um, his game has improved every year. As a runner, we already know what time it is. So, yeah, I, I don't think 1500 from scrimmage is far-fetched at all. You can get like 1200 uh, on the ground, 300 in the air, 1100 on the ground, 400 in the air. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely doable. Uh, he said, I, I hate that as soon as something happens, hey, let's get a vet. No, no, no. Go with what you got. If you bring a vet in, you're going to have to feature him. Uh, and us Ravens fans know how that goes. It always stunts the younger players' growth on offense. Uh, we could have had the next best thing in the NFL with who we have behind Gus, but we'll never know if we bring in a vet. Uh, over the years, we have a list of running backs that would have never got that shot if we didn't run with what we had. Do you think we should bring in a vet? You already know what I said. I said no. I already said I, I hope they run with what they got. I don't think that they will, but I hope that they do. Uh, no knock to JK, but I think this is blown out of proportion as everything is with the Ravens. And I say no knock to JK because everywhere you look, it's all oh, man. Ravens lost their RB1. Their season is doomed. No, no, no. I love JK and what he brings to the table. Uh, and everything as a, as a Raven fan could have hoped. But let's not act like Gus the Bus is the same thing, which one of the reasons why they split a lot of carries. But I think this will be in our favor because even though everybody has tape on Gus, the fact that Gus has been working on his passing game uh, will be something that they haven't seen. Uh, also, uh, anybody behind him, they've only seen in the preseason, so it's a shock and surprise to them. That's true. That's true. Um, and that's the same thing that I said, too. With J.K. Dobbins, it, it sucked. It sucked for J.K. It sucks for the Ravens. But they're in a position to where they can take – they can take that loss. They didn't want the loss. Nobody wanted the loss, but they can absorb that. Um, he said, also, I know uh, all the Ravens fans remember Mr. Billick uh, and the love for him uh, the, for the same thing they hated him for. Or they loved him for the same thing they hated him for. Uh, and that was where they called him a genius is for the same reason why they got him out of b -more. I feel like it's the same thing with Giro. He is the running game guru. And let's not act like he isn't proven to make any uh, body a rushing monster. Also, 
We all love to say, hey, Lamar's num numbers are in the top 10 passing and percentages and all the touchdown and interception ratio, et cetera. But at the same time, people love to say that they they uh, need to do away with g -Row when his system is what's providing this efficiency. Hmm. As much as people love to hate him, he has a lot of success with what he does. Yes. Um, what g -Row does well, he does well. And yeah, that is a, a focus. We're, we're running with the running game. It's big numbers is big efficiency too um but with the passing game it's big efficiency is smaller numbers as far as yards uh but with running game is yards numbers efficiency all that but passing game is just efficiency touchdowns and all that but anyway um he said which leads me to my last question and statement one thing a lot of people don't talk about in the playoffs or even losses period is the defense now me i'm a realistic ravens fan the ravens as a team aren't really that stacked up as they make them out to be especially that defense no knock to our guys our losses might have been on lamar definitely on the play calling but what we were missing that would get us over the hump is the defense and the stops that we aren't stopping anybody uh is that's great and now lamar he puts those points up but that's something very alarming to me. Now, it has been pushed to the side because of the turnovers, and I'm thankful for that. But with this year and the acquisitions between free agency and the draft, do you think that our defense will be uh, head and shoulders above our defense from last year? They should be because, remember, no offseason. That, like, that is, is I know you all hear me say it a lot, but it is a big answer to a lot of the questions from last year. We see a lot of the struggles with different players, with different schemes, with different this and different that. And that's something that a lot of us forget, that last year they didn't have an offseason. So everything was learn as you go. Now, it ain't necessarily an excuse for everybody, but that's what it was. They didn't have the off. This year they had the offseason to prepare. This year they made a lot of additions, and they pretty much kept everybody from last year on defense. I'm trying to think. Is are any of the defensive? Well, Matt Judon's gone. Um Jihad Ward's gone. Uh, LJ Fort, he's out for the season, unfortunately. But they pretty much got everybody. They got, like, mostly everybody back. Uh, so every, everybody will have another year experience in this defense, another year of that knowledge of this defense. So I think that'll uh, definitely make a big difference. Um, oh, and he said, I do. He said, I, I do think that they'll be head and shoulders above uh, from what they were last year. He said, number one, away. He is going to be an X factor on our defense. I'm calling it right now. No need to get in depth. He's a freak of nature, just like uh, Montez Sweat with the Washington football team. Number two, Chris Westry. Now, we all know how much Ravens value their big corners, but he is probably the second fastest person on the team. And he's six foot four. And he's a converted wide receiver. I didn't know that. Uh, having him on the field with the rest of our secondary is going to be crazy. Sure, he's not as p polished, but I remember a time when Marlon Humphrey wasn't either. Ooh, number three, Anthony Averett. Much like Chris Westry, he isn't polished, but he is going to have big plays this year. I can feel it in my bones, bro. He has all the skill set. He just cannot locate the ball. Yeah, that's that's his that's his problem right there. Once he fixed that, ooh, it's going to be a wrap. Uh, but this year, he's going to do a lot of locating. Okay, appreciate it. And Brandon Stevens, much like Levine, they can place him anywhere. And you know Ravens love players like that. I don't need to say much about him. I promise you will see him everywhere. Yeah, he is definitely going to be uh, heavily involved. And, yeah, he's going to be a little bit of everywhere. I could, I could definitely see that. Shout out to Graven.